Hey everybody, welcome to this Photoshop tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com where today we're going to take a look at creating these video game style tones for your images and this is an effect that looks really cool on landscape photos but even on portrait photos, studio lit images, wedding photos, natural light, 100% naturally lit photos, you name it. We're going to make an action out of this as well so you can quickly apply it to a hundred different images, maybe all at the same time or all at once, whatever. Um, but it's a really, really cool, neat little effect and we're going to, in creating the action, play with some of the more complex features that the action that the actions panel has to offer us so it's gonna be really cool I think you're gonna pick up a thing or two from this stick around and check it out before we get into it I have a bundle of tutorials I'm selling over on tutfit.com all about how to retouch images you should definitely go check it out it's like 27 bucks I think is what I have it listed for there's a link here in the video there's a link in the video description it supports the site it allows me to keep bringing these tutorials to you just about every single day and if you can't afford it right now or you don't want to get it, hey, it's cool. I'm still making these tutorials and I hope you enjoy them just as much either way. So we've got this image here and it's just an image basically right out of camera at this point. We've done virtually no color changing or editing or split toning or anything like that in the camera raw editor. Blue skies, water, greenery. We've got a good mix of everything you would find in a landscape photo. And oh, by the way, it's taken right around sunrise as well. So let's talk about how we can create this color effect of this image. First thing we're going to do is go window actions because yes, we are creating an action uh, for this image but we need to number one create a conditional action so what this means is some images that we begin with are going to have a background layer some aren't uh, like this image here no background layer it's just this layer and we want the, the action to work on this image as well how do we get rid of a background layer um, but just ignore it in an image where there is no background layer. Well, we create what's called a conditional action. So let's just select an action folder. And the first thing we're going to do is set or create the action that is going to be triggered if a condition is met. Just hang with me here for a second if it's not making sense to you. Follow along. You'll see exactly what I mean in just a second. We're going to create a new action here, and we're going to call this action background to layer. So we're going to convert our background layer to just a straight up layer layer. Go ahead and hit record and here's all we're going to do. Layer, new, layer from background. All right. And you can see, we can give it a name, whatever. I'm going to say layer zero. Our background image is now a standard layer. We stop recording. We now have our background to layer action. Now what we're going to do is create a new action. This is actually going to be the action that creates that epic video game tone color. So we're going to call this video game tones. We're going to go ahead and hit record. And the very first thing that we're going to interject here is up in the actions flyout menu, we're going to choose insert conditional. Now what this is going to do is say, look, if current, so if something, if current, if current layer is background, right, play the background to layer action else uh, don't play anything that's the only thing that we wanted to do so we're gonna hit OK all right so we've set that I'm gonna stop this action from recording let's real quick test that so I have uh, this this image the layer is not a background we can just go ahead and play our action and you can see nothing happens because the layer is not a background image I'm gonna right click and choose flatten image we now have a background image as our or a background layer really as our sole layer video game tones action let's try playing it and look at that. It triggers the background to layer action from the video game tones action, therefore making our background layer a normal functioning layer that we can move around and shift and play with. That's going to be important. Let's keep playing with our background layer here as we record though. Select the if state and hit the record button to continue recording from where we stopped. Here comes tricky part number two, but we're going to really, the trickiness is going to come in later. We're going to go image calculations. And I know this is, everyone's used calculations, right? Not. Um, calculations is kind of like an advanced channel blending feature in Photoshop. It's really complicated, but not really. It just has a lot of like switches and drop downs and stuff. You'd basically choose the image, right? O1 JPEG, O1 JPEG, working within the same image. We're not blending from another image. You choose a layer within that image. The background layer is the only layer we've got, right? And then you choose a color channel which you want to blend. So we can blend like the red channel with the blue channel. And you can see we get a vastly different effect than just blending, for instance, a red with a red. Now, you may notice it's only giving us options for two different layers. And you can see I can go to like 01 PSD and I can choose the green channel of like the levels layer. And it is like completely different, right? It's a layer mask, really. Um, I don't, I don't want to do that uh, at all. In fact, I'm going to stick with 01.jpg. But just know you can go and um, 
blend together channels from multiple documents that are open in Photoshop. The key is, and the reason for instance only these two images are showing up, is because the documents need to be the same exact pixel width and height dimensions. So everything needs to be the same. These images are all different sizes, so it's only going to allow me to blend from the images that are the same size. So just keep that in mind. I like the blend mode of multiply. You can play around with some other blend modes, see what effects you get. Maybe every image is a little bit different, right? But with this effect, multiply tends to work really well. And I'm going to leave the opacity at 100%, but you're going to see in a little bit we can change this later on in the action. We'll get to that. This is very important here. The result needs to be a new document, not a selection or just a new channel. We want to create an entirely new document. Go ahead and hit OK. All right, so what we've just done is we've moved now from 01.jpg over to this new document that just got created, untitled-13. We want to go image, mode. Ready? It's a multi-channel image. It's not even like a regular RGB image. If we go over to the channels panel, you can see it's just an alpha channel. That's all it is. It's not like a, a red, green, and blue channel image. It's not an LAB image. It's not a CMYK image. We want to make it an RGB image though. So we're going to go mode, change it from multi-channel to grayscale, right? We need to go there first. And then we can go grayscale to RGB. Once we've done that, you can see our actions, it's still recording everything as we go here. We're going to go select all to just grab the whole entire image, edit, copy, and then we're just going to close this untitled 13 image. I don't want to save it. Don't save. And it automatically is going to pop us back to the last document we were in, which was the 01.jpg image. At this point, we want to go ahead and get rid of our background image because we need to uh, paste this image in but move it beneath our image. So I'm going to stop recording, right? Remember, we created that conditional action to take care of any background uh, image problems we had. So I'm just going to knock this out manually. We're only going to have to do this once here while we're creating the action, right? Go back to recording and then we're going to go edit paste to paste our black and white image in. Now, we want to be able to move our layers around the layers panel without touching the layers with the mouse while we're recording. Why? Well, because not every image is going to start out on layer zero. So if we select layer zero, our action is going to always tell Photoshop, hey, select layer zero, but if this layer is called like, you know, blue, blue sky or something, it can't select layer zero and the action is going to break because it's going to say, look, layer zero just isn't there, so I can't select that. So we need a way, instead of saying select layer zero, to just say, hey, select the one layer below this black and white layer. And we can do that. Actually, I take that back. We need to move the entire black and white layer underneath the color image. We're going to do selecting in just a second, but it's very, very similar. To move this layer down, we hold down the command or control key and we select the left square bracket key. So you can see it just drops the black and white layer beneath the color layer and in fact we can see that it registers as just a move current layer and what it would say if we really opened it up is like move current layer below. Now we want to select the colored image so we're going to hold on the alter option key and select the right square bracket key and that selects you can see select forward layers so select the next layer up. What we're going to do now is go layer, layer style, blending options and set the opacity of this layer to 50%. Right, so boom, hit OK, and we drop that layer to 50%. We're already starting to get like these epic looking moody colors. It looks pretty cool. What we need to do is now select the black and white layer. Again, remember, hold down the Alter Option key, and in this, uh, this time we're going to hit the left square bracket key. Selects layer one, great. And here we go, layer, new adjustment layer, levels. So here in levels, well, hit OK, and it's going to bring up the levels adjustment here, which is great. We want to make a couple changes. Now I've got some things written down here. I know I want to drag the black slider up about to 15, 15, 16. That's fine. All this is, you know, as long as you're roughly in the neighborhood, it's probably going to be good. About 240 on the whites. We're just popping a little bit of contrast into there. And then we grab the black output slider and we lift it to about 35. So what this does is it's really opening up all of the shadows in the darker parts of our image. Now we're going to go to the red channel. So I just hit that drop down menu, choose the red channel. From the red channel, I'm going to drag the dark slider over. You can see it's introducing a bunch of cyan. I want to drag it over to about 20. So we want to set it to 20. We want to drag the mid-tone slider back to about 1.4. And then the white slider to introduce some red as well. We're going to drag that about two, to about 225. And next up, we're going to go to the green channel. And here in the green channel, we just need to make a very slight change. With the mid-tone slider, we just drag it back to like 1.15. We're just looking to dunk some greens right into the mid-tone portions of our image. After that, we're going to drop right down to the blue channel. And in the blue channel, we're going to drag the dark slider over to about 10. So this is going to infuse some yellow into our image. So drag it about 10, 11, whatever, that's fine. And then I'm also going to drag the white output slider to about 220. 
So what we've done here, you can see, is we've really applied like this color film over the black and white image, and then over top of all of that, our originally colored image is sitting there at that 50% opacity. We want to move up to our top layer here, so we're going to hold down Alt and hit the, uh, the right bracket. There we go, and it moves us from levels up one layer. And now on this layer, we're going to apply in a, a curves adjustment layer. So it's going to drop a curves adjustment layer really above that layer. And I'm going to drag just a, a subtle S curve into our image, just like that. It just gives us a pop of contrast. I'm going to stop recording now. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to hold down Alter Option, drag this layer up to the top and increase the opacity to 100%. This is an example of the image we began with. I shut this layer off. And here's our image with these new color tones. So it's a very like color graded video game tone looking image. We also though have our action, but the action is not complete. Why? Well, I'm going to show you why. Let's go to this image right here. I'm going to try to play the action. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And look at what it says. Look, the object red channel of background of document 01.jpg is not available. Why? Well, we have a red channel here. We don't have a background layer, so that's an issue. Um, and we're not in image 01.jpg, so something has to change. This is 01-desert-mountains.jpg, but I don't want to have to rename every single image that I ever work with in Photoshop just to use an action. So we need to change this make command, right? This make command is make a new document using, you guessed it, calculation. Calculation, red channel, right? And calculate it with multiply blend mode, source to other red channel. So what we need to do is we need to switch this and make this something that the person triggering the action controls for each image. So just select the make option in your actions panel and hit the delete or the trash can button. Hit OK. And I'm going to select if right here. And I'm going to choose my flyout menu and choose to insert a menu item. Now it's going to say, look, select a menu item. So I'm going to go image calculations. There we go. OK. And you can see select calculations menu item is now inserted in between our if conditional action in that action and when it converts from that multi-channel black and white image to a grayscale and then of course we convert from grayscale to RGB and so on and so forth. So let's try playing this action now on this image. Go ahead and hit the play button and look at what happens. Calculations opens up. Now we can go ahead and actually because it's kind of super dark we can even reduce the opacity a little bit right you can adjust it for every single image you do which is great here is something that's very 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 important you want the result to be again not new channel but new document this is something that you're gonna have to set for each time you apply this action so just know that going in if you hit new channel it's just gonna if you run the action and things look really really weird the likelihood is you set it to new channel it'll like go to the image before and do all kinds of weird stuff hit OK and let's see what happens there we go. We've applied the effect to a new image. Let's see what it looks like here for this image of Machu Picchu. There's a little heavy vignetting going on, but what I want you to do is pay particular attention to these green tones and what happens to these grassy tones. Also, by the way, we've got a background image here. Let's see what happens. Let's go ahead and play the action. Here's our calculations. Now, one of the things that's interesting about this Machu Picchu image is we have a lot of dark pixels. So in this case, I really want to pull back on the opacity and reveal some detail back there. I don't want that to just be massive areas of blackness. And whoop, make sure I set the result to new document. Hit OK. Pretty cool. Look at, I mean, look at those greens. They're just amazing. I love that particular tone. Let's try this cliffs image here. No background image. Let's play the action. We're going to go ahead, new document. I'm going to leave it at 100%. Hit OK. You can see we got a really cool little effect there. And then last but not least, the sort of jungly image. Go ahead, play that. So let's go result, new document, and hit OK. And you can see we have a really cool effect there as well. So just across the board, a bunch of different styles of landscape images. I know we don't have any portraits or like, you know, wedding photos or anything, but I just grabbed a few like epic looking photos that I could find and we've applied this effect and it's different on every one, but it's, I would say equally cool on just about all of them. And a lot of these images, they're just images that look like they basically came right out of the camera, with the exception of Machu Picchu here with the heavy vignetting and whatnot. But this is a great little action. In fact, I'll link this action in uh, over on tutvid.com. If you click, there should be a link in the uh, description of this video linking to this tutorial on my site. I will give you guys this download, this action as a download. You can take it and play with it on your own as well. But that is how I go and create these video game style tones in landscape photos and especially in like commercial composite work getting this sort of like extra realism but still definitely not 100% real looking background image this is the kind of effect that I apply and it also 
happens to be a really interesting way to use the calculations command here in Photoshop. So, for calculations and video game style tones and actions with conditional statements and, and menu items inserted into them, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, Tutfield.com. I'll catch you in the next one.